Okay, so <laughs> I'm not very good at conforming, and I'm not very good at being politically correct. Um, so uh, <clears throat> I, I, I kind of warned Kirsten that I was going to get off track a little bit and, and do a call for action tonight, and she told me to be concise when I did this. And I'm nervous, and there's no way that that's going to happen. Um, but instead, uh, there, there is something kind of in my heart that I'm just going to go with instead. And that is, um, I think on my first slide, I'm not sure if it's going to time out right, but I want to talk about this sentence. And it's, um, I'm drinking the Kool-Aid from the 18B Arts District. And I'm a little bit of a smart ass. Um, but I'm having a love affair with the 18B Arts District. And those who are familiar with Colab, um, we've had some amazing successes, and we haven't been around that long. Um, but it's not because of Amy Fincham that we've had successes. It's because of the people in this room. And I wish that I had contacts that would write prescriptions so I could see all your faces better. Um, but I know Chuck's in the back. And the reason that Colab has been successful is because Chuck with Ugug. Uh, volunteered to record a video for Indiegogo campaign where the members of this community right here donated $8,000 um, and so it was a success and it was also leading up to that campaign that Levi with Art Square Theater sat in a room for me for two hours and told me how to be successful with that campaign and it's Brett Sperry that I saw earlier that constantly was mentoring me and saying what if we do this and just being a really great friend and even brought my five-year-old a birthday cake on his birthday and did you know that Kirsten Clark was one of the seven people that helped launch Colab and it was it was those seven people that helped and it was because of Quentin and Carol's Facilitech that we got the free space to do it my point being that nothing great happens because of one person great things happen because people come together for one purpose and they believe in it and um, it just tells you kind of what we could do as a community. So I'm all hyped up and in love with you guys in this community because I think we're onto some really great things. So hit it. <laughs> <laughs> so I was raised Mormon in a big family with six kids. I was uh, raised in Olympia, Washington. This literally was my backyard that you stepped into. So I have a super connection to nature. I was first introduced through art from my father. We used to paint as a family. This was our garden growing up. We had chickens and pigs and um, I quit college after first year to snowboard for a year. I love to build and create things with my hands. Um, and quilting is cool, and I do this. Um, and I played soccer from the time I was six up until a couple of years ago when my body didn't agree with my, what my mind thought my abilities were. I'm so busy promoting other artists and designers, you probably don't know that I'm an artist myself. And I'm also a designer. This is a concept I came up with for Fremont before the great takeover. Uh, and then my greatest creation today is my three kids um, who are 13, 12, and 5, Trist, Arian, and Calix. I did graduate from architecture school eventually, um, and I did work in architecture for various firms for, for 13 years where I was a designer and a project manager. I did uh, small commercial buildings to um, big strip properties until I started my own business in 2010 in downtown Las Vegas. It was about that time that I met Rosalind Brooks who told me about Vegas Roots Community Garden and I said count me in and so after this groundbreaking uh, we hosted a few design charrettes to really come up with a concept for a master plan for Vegas Roots Community Garden and you guys this project changed my life. And that's a pretty big statement but it, what it, this project taught me is that power for community. So when I'm constantly talking about communities because of this project, it taught me that people's lives can change and it was really exciting for me, so much that I was really neglecting my own business. And I figured that I needed to find some new direction where I can combine my passion and love for architecture and design, but also for my love for community projects. It was so also about this time in 2012 where I was just so frustrated. I was seeing all these great projects in Las Vegas, 65% of architects were laid off. And uh, instead of being one of those people that just kind of bitches and complains about it, I wanted to take action. Um, so I wanted to create a platform to be able to showcase that we do have talent in this city. And I came up with a concept for Colab Las Vegas. And as I mentioned, seven people I kind of got together. Um, Quentin and Carol um, gave me this free space to use. And that's when we launched our first exhibit called um, young guns. So it was seven young up-and-coming designers. Um, these are the seven people that helped launch it in that space. And um, it was uh, 
April 5th, 2012, that we had over two people come. So we were kind of floored, like, what's going on here? Maybe this is kind of cool. Um, this is the work of those seven designers. And it's from this show where somebody else led Cultures Affairs uh, at the city of Las Vegas that they maybe should come talk to us about a public art project. Um, so they wanted us to hire some of them. We said we'll hire all seven of them, and then we added Zach Strassi to the team to make up a team of eight. That was a picture of our five-day workshop we had. These are the renderings that they came up with after those five days. So it's a $2.5 million public art project. The project is moving forward. It's on Charleston right off of the 15. Uh, we're in negotiations with the city right now, um, and it looks like we're kicking off this month to remove this bridge element and redesign it at grade level. So this is right at Wholesome Lofts. Um, so kind of cool twist to the start of an organization, and it got us off and running um, with a space at Art Square. We followed that with doing different events like Parking Day, showing what you could do in a very small space. We wanted to promote women in design because I was told there are no good women designers in this city. So we did an exhibit and a panel discussion. We proved them wrong. And we did a lecture series um, that was seven designers. We want to inspire local designers to see what else was going on. And right now we're working on the Ogden Underground project. It's a $500,000 public art installation um, uh, at the Rail Run Underpass. It was those 10 artists that competed for the commission for moving forward with this winning design. And this is really the direction of the organization. We think there's a lot of um, opportunity to uh, give artists and designers opportunity in public art and uh, just more of a general dialogue about uh, design that they want to get. So we've just put in a proposal for a $1 million project in Seattle. We haven't heard from them yet. Crossing fingers. And it'd be six new artists and designers. Outside of Colab, I'm going right back to the garden and I uh, want to combine edible landscape and community connectivity with a project um, that we would be building uh, five duplexes on the property. Uh, this is really a catalyst project. I think that we can think differently about how we build houses and community and um, also connect our belief in where food comes from and um, maybe uh, our kids will be better at thinking about those kind of things than we are because I know I'm screwed. So that's pretty much what we're up to.